Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you a cool new way to think about derivatives from calculus. So we probably know what a derivative is if you're watching this video. Basically we have some function f of x and let's say we have some curve and we're gonna have some tangent line, some line that's tangent to this curve. It's gonna be at some point. Let's call this A and let's call this F of A. You've probably all seen this. And uh, so the slope of this line is the derivative. Derivative which we denote f prime of a. It's probably what you're accustomed to, as far as derivatives are concerned. But the, I'm going to show you a better way to think about derivatives. It generalizes pretty nicely. Okay, first, um, it's, we have to rethink how we think about functions like this, like how we think of these kinds of functions. Instead of thinking about it like a graph, we want to think of functions as actions. Think of functions as actions. So what does this mean? So let's say we have um, some number line and you know, so, so this is my x, and instead of graphing the function on the y-axis, let's, let's think of this as an action. Let's think of this. Let's think of f of x as taking this number line and doing something interesting with it. So we're taking this number line and we're doing something with it. Let's say we're, this is equal to 5x. So we're taking this number line and this minus 1 gets mapped to a minus 5. This 1 here gets mapped to this 5. 0 maps to 0. Right? And uh, we're effectively stretching this number line by a factor of five. And that's what this function is doing. Normally you would just graph it as, you know, some line like this, but now we have, um, we're doing something to the number line instead, right? And uh, we can translate this um, to rethink what, it, um, what derivatives are in terms of a function. So let's go ahead and try to think about that. So let's, first of all, let's just consider the function um, f of x is equal to x squared. And uh, okay, and so, so classically you think of like a parabola, right? And, and, and you think of like a parabola, and think of some tangent line, say if this is, you know, um, that's supposed to be tangent, say like, uh, x equals 5 or something, and the slope of this line is, you know, f prime of 5, and that would be the slope here. Um, but but let, let's think of it in terms of this, um, s stretching the number line. So, um, we have this number line, and we're going to um, map everything. So 1 goes to 1. 2 goes to 4, and eventually we'll have a 5 that's going to map all the way over here to 25. 25. Okay, okay so what's a derivative then? So derivative is um, so if we want to compute the derivative at x equals 5, so here's 5, right? And we take on higher level math, we say this is 
a neighborhood around x equals 5. So that corresponds to some neighborhood here around x equals 5. And um, what does that look like? What does that image look like? So the idea of a derivative is that um, this tangent line around this x equals 5 is going to be very close to the actual function, right? So generally speaking, what we want is we, we know 5 gets mapped to 25, but we want to look at the small interval around here. So let's say this is 5 plus epsilon, this is 5 minus epsilon, and this here is dx, or, like, or it's 2 epsilon or dx. It's some small neighborhood around 5, and that's going to map to some small neighborhood around 25, right? And let's just call this dy, dy. Okay, so, so we think about the derivatives as the slope of this line. Right. But, but, but if, we, if we really think about it, right, um, we can kind of internalize this to think that um, really what it is, is it's this D, it's how much we stretch this by, how much we stretch the number line by. So, so it's going to be this dy divided by this dx here. So, so this is what I call dy and it's going to be divided by dx. And yet you've probably seen this notation before, and that's not really a coincidence because we look at some small neighborhood around five, and that's our dx, and, and the image of all of these blue points are going to map to some image around all of these blue points, and we, we just want to look at this length, this length here, divided by this length here. And that's, this is precisely um, going to be f prime of five because we're looking around 5 and we're seeing, okay, how much dilation occurs here? Okay, so, so how do we find this? So we could use the definition of the derivative, or we can just say, okay, so let's see, we know these endpoints end are going to map to these endpoints here. So in other words, um, this endpoint is going to be f of 5 plus epsilon, and this is going to be f of five minus epsilon. So what is this? This is just gonna be five plus epsilon squared, which is just 25 plus 10 epsilon plus epsilon squared. This epsilon squared we can actually kind of ignore because it's sm it, epsilon is really small. So this is gonna be close to zero. So it's epsilon squared. So we have this 10 epsilon here. So, so notice this, um, we have something, and so similar, similarly, um, so this gets mapped to 25 plus 10 epsilon. Similarly, we can check this gets mapped to 25 minus 10 epsilon. So, so dy is going to have kind of like a length of um, 20 epsilon, and this dx has a length of 2 epsilon, which is 10, right? So, so this is saying that f prime of 5 is 10. And we, we, we know that um, uh, the derivative of x squared is 2x, right? So, so we can check that, indeed, if f of x is x squared, f prime of 5 is 10. So this actually give us, gives us the correct answer for the derivative. So th this is actually how we can think about derivatives. Instead of the slope of the line, we can think about how much does it dilate around some point? Right. So th this way of thinking can generalize very nicely. So I'm going to make a new video next time that um, kind of shows you how to think we can think about derivatives in multiple dimensions. Right. So, so, so here we're working with functions from R to R. But really, generally, we, we, can, we can think of functions from, you know, Rn to Rm. Let me take derivatives there, like Jacobians, if you, if you take a uh, multivariable calculus. So, so essentially, um, this way of thinking can generalize very nicely um, to multidimensional functions. Um, but one last comment for the single variable case for thinking about these derivatives is going to be, what if we have two functions now? We have two functions 
So let's say we again, we have this x squared function, but let's say we also have this other function. We also have 3x function. And what if we want f of g of x, which is going to be, you know, 3x squared or 9x squared? What if we want to find f of g of x, this composite function, and we want to differentiate that? What's that going to be equal to? And you might know this from the chain rule already. You've, you've learned the chain rule. But so, so but let, let's think about our new way of thinking about derivatives and see what happens here. So, um, again, we have this. For, first, we do, um, so we do the inside function first. So first, we're going to do g, and then we're going to apply f. And um, to, to make this more general, let's pick an arbitrary point. Arbitrary point. So our arbitrary point here is going to be some x. And under g, that's going to get mapped to g of x. And under f, that's going to get, get mapped to f of g f of g of x. So what's the derivative here? Um, essentially what it is, again, we take a small neighborhood around here, dx, and this is going to go to um, some small neighborhood around here, right? Okay, and then once again, uh, this here is going to map to some small neighborhood around f of g of x, right? So we have this dx and we have this, call it, you know, this blue neighborhood is dy, this neighborhood here is dz. So uh, uh, the, the, the way we're thinking about derivatives is we think about this composite function, and we'll, we want to find this area, which we named dz, and divide it by this area, which we named dx. So we, we want to think about... Sort of like this, this ratio. This is how we're going to think about it. So, so again, it's important to note we can't really think about... Um, like, Strictly speaking, derivatives aren't fractions, but we can sort of think about them as fractions. And in some sense, they, they, they behave similarly as fractions in certain situations. Um, so, so we kind of want this area divided by this area here. That's dz over um, dx, right? Um, so, okay, so... Um, how exactly are we going to compute that? So we can think of this as being dz over dy and dy over dx, right? Okay, and in different notation, what this is essentially saying is that um, f of g of x prime is really just um, f prime of g of x because that's essentially going, that's going from here to here, right? That's this part here. And we multiply by, okay, d by dx, what's, what's this here? So, so, so this is g prime of x, right? Going from here to here, this is the g prime of x part. So we multiply by g prime of x. And this right here is exactly the chain rule, which we've rederived sort of using um, this new uh, heuristic, uh, heuristic for thinking about what a derivative is. 
So again, not really like a rigorous proof, if you were more of a rigorous proof guy, but it's a good intuition for why the chain rule is true using this new way of thinking about derivatives, thinking of functions as actions rather than uh, a graph. Right? And so one, one final question you may have is why do we multiply here? Why do we multiply? And um, you can kind of think of it as um, th th this multiplication in this context is uh, kind of analogous to function composition, composi composition. Because yeah, as we'll talk about next time in the multivariable case, um, we can think we can think about going from here to here and here to here as kind of uh, a, a linear function, right? So 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 th this is some um, locally this this kind of looks like multiplication by some function, um, because that's essentially what a derivative is. It's a linear approximation. We're saying in this blue neighborhood, right? In this blue neighborhood, g looks like some linear function, right? It looks like some a times x, and um, f also looks like some linear function, right? It, look, it looks like some b times x, um, right? Or b is just a constant. It, it, so, so it looks like multiplication, right? Um, so, so, so what are these a's and b's? So, so really, what we're saying is that um, in this small neighborhood, um, g looks like the function. Um, g prime um, of x times x, right? It, it, it basically looks like multiplication by g prime of x, right? And, and this function here kind of looks like multiplication by um, by this, by f prime of g of x. Right, and that's b. So so that's why we multiply here because it, it's tantamount to functional composition, and that's how we derive the chain rule. Right? Again, so it's not a super rigorous argument, but if you're just learning calculus, this is a very good uh, way to um, th intuitively think about what derivatives are, right, and, and what the chain rule is, and what and and how to compute derivatives. Um, so so hopefully that helps.